In this video, I'd like to talk about how to compare two different quadratic functions. And so in these problems, you're going to be given one equation and one graph, and we need to answer a question about them. Specifically, this first question asks which one has the greater y-intercept. So to start this problem, well, let's look at the graph first and figure out what the y-intercept is. So remember, that's where the curve, this blue line, intersects this y-axis here. Or in other words, the y-intercept is when x is 0. So for this blue curve right here, you can see it intersects at a y-value of 6. So now we know the y-intercept for g of x, but what would it be for f of x? And the reason I wrote this in here to make it explicit is we're going to use this information. Because think about it, any point on this line has the same x value. They all have an x value of 0. So if we just plug in 0 to our function, then we can figure out what the y value is. So I'm going to set x equal to 0. So we have f of 0. We're just replacing the x with 0. And when we do that, we get 6 times 0 squared plus 18 times 0 plus 3. And the nice thing about standard form is that you can very quickly find the y-intercept. Because notice that these first two terms with x in it, they just go away because that's just 0 and 0. And so f of 0, our y-value when x is 0, is 3. So which one of these has the greater y-intercept? Well, that would be g of x, since f of x has a y-intercept of 3 and would be going through somewhere right here. Now, we don't know the rest of the graph, but we do at least know that. And if we wanted to plot this, we could do that. We could complete the square, turn this into vertex form, and then find the intercepts. But this question doesn't ask for all that. All we need to do is find this y-intercept. So let's do several more of these. There's lots of different questions they could ask. So this one asks about the function's concavity. So what that means is whether the function is opening up or whether it's opening downward. Because with parabolas, with quadratic functions, it's one or the other. And when we look at the general form, let's say standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. If a, the number in front, is a positive number, then you get this case, where it opens up. But if a is a negative number, then you get the downward opening parabola. So do they have the same concavity? Well, this one opens up. So if we knew the equation for this, we, knew, we would know that a is a positive number. But for this equation here, matching it up to standard form, a looks to be negative 1. So we have this negative in front. And so this one would be opening downward. So they do not have the same concavity. 1 f of x opens downward and g of x opens upward. Now you could actually graph this since this one you can factor pretty quickly. You can pull out a minus x and you get x plus 15. And you know it goes through at 0 and minus 15 over here. You can find its vertex, which is an x value of minus 7.5. You can plug that in. But you're going to get some very positive number. And so it'll be up here and coming down. So if you wanted to do that, you can. If you weren't completely sure how to solve this, you can always fall back on graphing. And that will at least give you more information when trying to answer these questions. So let's keep going. How many roots do the functions have in common? So what are the roots? Well, the other word for these are zeros, or essentially this is when the function is equal to zero, or the y value is zero. So these are, another word for them, these are just the x-intercepts. So if you ever hear the roots, the zeros, all they're talking about is the x-intercepts, or when the y value is zero. So for g of x, you can visually see them they have an x value of 2 and 5 for the roots. But for f of x, we have to find them. And if we're looking for the roots, the easiest way to find them is in factored form. Since, for instance, if we had, let me use a different letter, h of x is x minus 2, x plus 4. If it's in factored form, you can find these roots really quick. They're at 2 and minus 4 since you're just setting the function equal to 0 and using the zero product property. So we'll do the same thing with f of x. We just need to factor it. So you have x squared minus 4x minus 5. And we'll use our two binomials multiplied together. We know there's going to be two terms in each. And we know the first ones, this one and this one, have to be x 
because they combine to make x squared. If this had a different coefficient, you'd have to use the grouping method to be able to factor it. But since the coefficient is 1, you can assume that we have x and x here. Then these terms, when multiplied together, these are our constants, they multiply to get negative 5. So let's write out the factor pairs. What numbers multiply to negative 5? So we have minus 1 and 5, or 1 and minus 5. And then out of these factor pairs, which one of them adds up to minus 4? Well, that would be this one. So we have plus 1 minus 5. So the roots of this function, when we set the function equal to 0, then x would be 5 and minus 1. Oops. So if we graph this, at 5 and negative 1, that would be our function. And we could find more information, like the vertex would be right in the middle of 5 and negative 1. It would be at 2. We could plug 2 in here, find the y value, and continue the graph. But we just need to know, do they have any roots in common? Well, they didn't share this negative 1, but they do both share x equals 5 as one of their roots. So if you plug 5 into either this equation or to this function here, this blue curve, you would get a y value of 0. So to answer this question, how many do they have in common? Well, just one in this case. So let's keep going. And this question is asking which function has a greater maximum? So with this problem, you can see very quickly this g of x curve has a maximum right here. And that looks to be a y value of 8. So g of x, we'll say, has a max of 8. Whereas f of x, we don't know. But notice that this is in vertex form. So let me just remind you of vertex form. It's a times x minus h squared plus k, where the vertex is the x value, which makes this expression 0. So if you plug in h here, then this whole thing goes away, and you get a y value of k. So h comma k is the vertex. And so in our case, it looks to be the x value that makes this 0 is negative 4. So our vertex is at minus 4. And when we plug in minus 4, this all goes away, and you just get plus 8. So you get 8 here. And so which function has the greater maximum? Well, the maximum of this one is also at negative 8, or positive 8. So we have minus 4, 8, and then it's downward opening. So it's going to go down somewhere like that. We don't need to know any of the extra details. But what we can see is that their greatest y value, their maximum function value, is the same. In both cases it's 8. So f of x and g of x have the same maximum. And let's do one last problem. So this one again is asking about the roots that they have in common, which means we're going to have to factor this. So we have f of x is x squared plus x minus 6. And for g of x, you can just visually see the roots. Remember roots, that's just, we're looking at the x-intercepts. And here, the x-intercepts for g of x are going to be x equals 2 and minus 1. So now we'll look for them for f of x. And so we can factor this. We'll put our two binomials. And each of these has two terms. We know the coefficient on x squared is 1, so this is just x and x. And we know that these two terms here, the number terms, multiply to minus 6. So let's look at the factor pairs of minus 6. It could be 1 and minus 6 minus 1 and 6, 2 and minus 3, or minus 2 and positive 3. And then we're looking for which of these factor pairs actually adds up to 1x. And that would be minus 2 and 3. So you have minus 2 plus 3. And we're setting this equation equal to 0 because we want the x-intercepts, which is when y is equal to 0 or the function is equal to 0. So you can see this is true. We'll use our zero product property when x is 2 and when x is minus 3. So 2 and minus 3 are the two zeros or the roots. And you can see they each share an x value of 2 in common. So how many of the roots do they share in common? Again, it's just going to be 1. 